Good day, Grade Nines, and happy greetings to each and every one of you. I am so glad that you were able to join Worksheet Cloud as we present the Grade Nine Natural Sciences lesson today. If you have a question during the lesson, send an email with your question to grade nine at worksheetcloud.com. My name is Mrs. Ernston, and I'm the Worksheet Cloud Grade Nine Natural Sciences teacher. I'm so glad that you could join our lesson today. Just a few tips during these unique times. Please remember if you are going to be going outside to exercise or if you need to do anything where you're going to be around interacting with other people, please remember to wear a face mask. Then when putting the face mask on and putting the face mask off, Please remember to only touch the elastic bands or only touch the pieces that go over your ears. Please, while you are wearing the mask, remember not to touch your hair, your face, your eyes, your nose, and try not to fidget with the mask as much as you can. Then always remember to wash your hands. Warm, soapy water is enough. When you do go out, please remember your social distancing. Preferably stay at home as much as you can and limit your interactions with people. And then if you are feeling unwell, please take your temperature. And if you think you've got a fever, contact your doctor. And if you have any questions throughout the lesson, just a reminder to email grade 9 at worksheetcloud.com. So in our lesson today, we're going to have a look at how iron reacts with oxygen. So we're going to see what happens, what is the product called, how do we represent the reaction between iron and oxygen, what is a combustion reaction, how is rust and how does it form, and how can iron be made more rust resistant. So a reminder of our previous lesson's content, what is combustion? So hopefully this image that I've put up will trigger your memory into remembering what the definition is. It is a rapid chemical combination of a substance with oxygen involving the production of heat and light. So important points you need to remember about combustion. Combustion is a chemical reaction. It takes place in the presence of oxygen. There is a release of energy as heat and light. The reactants always include oxygen and the product always contains an oxide. So here we have two diagrams. One is rust on the bonnet of a car and one is rust on a piece of metal. So this is showing you how iron reacts with oxygen. So when iron rusts, it is because the iron metal reacts with oxygen in the air to form iron oxide. And you can see from these diagrams that iron oxide is a reddish brown color. If you need to pause the video to get this statement down, you can. So what I would like you to do is we are looking at iron reacting with oxygen. So I would like you to write the word equation. Then I would like you to convert the word equation into a chemical reaction. And then I want you to convert the chemical reaction into a picture equation. And then I would like you to balance the chemical reaction equation, preferably using a table format. If you have only joined our lesson now, it might be hugely beneficial and helpful if you go back and look at our previous lessons on balancing equations and our previous lessons on compounds and the naming of compounds, and it will help you with balancing equations. So pause the video now and answer these four questions, please. Okay, so here is the word equation. Iron plus oxygen forms iron oxide. Here is our picture equation. The green circle represents iron. The red circles represent oxygen. 
and there are two red circles because oxygen in its natural state is a diatomic molecule and then iron oxide is made up of two iron atoms and three oxygen atoms. So if we have to represent this using the chemical equation, that is iron, as the green ball is Fe, oxygen, the two red balls, O2, and iron oxide is Fe2O3. So here's Fe2, O3, O1, 2, 3. So you can pause the video now to copy down this information and check whether or not your answers are correct. And now let's see if we can balance this chemical reaction. So we start out by writing the chemical reaction equation and then you put a line underneath and the line underneath separates the reactants from the products. So iron and oxygen are the reactants. So you write down the elements iron and oxygen. And then for the products, you write down the elements we find here, iron and oxygen. And the elements should balance each other out. So whatever elements are this side of the equation, the same elements should be this side of the equation. So we have iron and iron and oxygen and oxygen. Then you go and you write down how many atoms in each. So iron is an invisible one. Iron is one. Oxygen is two. Here iron is two and oxygen is three. So when we balance chemical equations, the general rule is start with the metal and then leave the oxygen and hydrogen if there is hydrogen in the equation till last. So on this side of the equation, I notice that there are two iron atoms. And on this side of the equation, I notice that there is one iron atom. So what I can do is I can add another molecule of iron. And remember, we are not allowed to balance equations by changing the subscripts at the bottom. We are only allowed to balance an equation using the coefficients. So now, if I add another molecule of iron, that now means I now have two iron atoms in the reactants and I've got two iron atoms in the products. And now I have two oxygen atoms in the reactants and I have three oxygen atoms in the products. So what you can do is if I multiply this side by three and I multiply by this side by two, they should balance each other out. So 2 times by 3 should give me 6, and 3 times by 2 should give me 6. So let's see. If we add another 3 molecules of oxygen here, so that now means I don't have 2 oxygen atoms anymore. I now have 6 oxygen atoms. And this side here, if we multiply this by 2, so we add another 2 molecules here, 2 times 3 is 6. So now in the process I have balanced my oxygen, but what have I done here to my iron? I now have 4 iron atoms. So now my iron is unbalanced, so my oxygen is still balanced at 6, but now my iron is unbalanced. Here I have 4 atoms of iron and here I only have 2. So how can we balance this out? Well, if we just have four molecules of iron, that now means I have four atoms of iron. And if we have a look at the elements and the atoms, our equation looks balanced. So well done. That was tricky. Well done to those of you that got it right. So today we're going to have a look at the reaction of iron with oxygen. And I'm wondering if you know what steel wool is. And I'm wondering if any of you happen to have any steel wool in the kitchen at home or with your cleaning apparatus or maybe in the garage. So steel wool is made up of very, very fine threads. And steel is an alloy made mostly out of iron. So when we have a look at how steel wool burns in oxygen, we actually are having a look at how iron reacts with oxygen. 
which means you actually have an opportunity to do this experiment at home if you do have some steel wool. So go and have a look around. Um, this, this is sort of what the steel wool looks like and you'll be able to find the steel wool in the cleaning section of your supermarkets. So if you want to try this experiment at home, you'll need the steel wool, preferably some safety glasses. Remember, you're going to be dealing with matches and an open flame. So I suggest you do this experiment well outside, nowhere near anything. And definitely make sure that you burn the steel wool on brick or cement or tar or somewhere where there, nothing else is flammable. Okay, what won't work in this is if you get the stainless steel scrubbers. Well, I haven't tried this experiment with the stainless steel scrubbers. I've only ever tried it with the steel wool. And with the steel wool, if you touch it and break it open, it, it breaks open into a thread-like structure. So as we go ahead and watch a YouTube clip on steel wool burning, I would like you to try and answer these five questions. So you can pause the video now and copy down the questions. Um, all the questions are in the worksheet that's associated with this lesson. So I do just want to bring your attention to what do I want you to have a look at when we do this experiment. So one, you are going to use steel wool in this demonstration, or we are going to use steel wool. Um, and just a reminder, what is steel wool made up of again? I want you to look at the metal before it's burnt and I want you to be able to describe what it looks like. Then when we carry out this experiment, can you actually see the oxygen that the metal is reacting with and are you able to describe this oxygen? What do you observe during the reaction? So this is going to be a bit tricky because you won't be able to smell anything um, unless you are doing this experiment for yourselves at home. But when we watch the clip, you will definitely be able to see and maybe you'll be able to hear something. If you are carrying this out at home, then you can use all your powers of observation. And what does the product of the reaction look like? And try and describe this in as much detail as possible. So before you go out and do this experiment, please will you watch the YouTube clip. Um, this experiment can be dangerous. So I definitely want an adult with you and I would like you to do this experiment outside as well and remember to clean up after yourself. Okay, so this video is brought to us by Burn Steel Wool by Nerd Rage and the YouTube clip is there. So when you've got a moment, please will you go across to the YouTube site and have a look at this video. This experiment involves flammable materials and smoke. This should be done outside or in a fume mode with basic fire safety rules. Greetings, fellow nerds. Let's do some really basic chemistry again. I have here some steel wool. It doesn't look like it, but it's actually quite reactive with air. To see this, first fluff it up a bit to give it more air between the voids. Now simply set on fire. As you can see, you get this nice light show of burning iron. What's happening is the iron is reacting with the air to form iron oxide. This happens with almost all iron, but steel wool is more spectacular because the small strands and high surface area let it heat up to the point that the reaction is self-sustaining and burns through the wool. Let's try that again. Be careful when doing this as the wool will throw off sparks that might set nearby things on fire. You have to fluff it up a bit because if you use compacted steel wool, the air can't get in and oxidize the iron. Now I'm going to go a step further and use the potassium chlorate we made. So thank you for the use of that YouTube clip. So I want to reiterate again, this experiment is dangerous. It does involve an open flame, it is flammable. The steel wool, the iron in the steel wool does burn. So please, will you do this in an open space away from people, away from animals? Make sure your parents have given you permission to do this. And please just be extremely careful. So we used steel wool in this demonstration, but what is steel wool mostly made of? So steel wool is an alloy 
made mostly of iron. So note the other metals in steel include carbon, manganese, phosphorus, sulfur, silicon, traces of oxygen, nitrogen, and aluminium. You do not need to know these names of the other elements in steel wool. For the benefits of this activity, let's focus on the fact that we are dealing with iron. Look at the metal before it was burnt. Describe what it looks like. So the steel wool consisted of thin threads of iron. Um, you had to open it up and, and pull it apart so it wasn't so compact. And basically it looked like thin hairs of metal. So depending on the state of the steel wool, um, it may be shiny or it may be a dull metallic gray. It may even be rusty. So it does depend on how long your steel wool has been exposed to air. So if it has been exposed to air and oxygen for quite a long time, the steel might not have a nice, bright, lusty, shiny color. It might have actually started to react with the air and formed a brown, rusty, orangey color. Or it may just be a dull metallic color. Can you see the oxygen that the metal will react with and can you describe it? So oxygen is a gas and we cannot see it directly and we can't necessarily observe it. So it's very difficult to be able to describe it. We just know that there is oxygen in the air. But in this reaction, we can't actually see it. It is a transparent gas. What do you observe during the reaction? Describe anything you see, hear, or smell. So the steel wool was burning, and I saw bright orange sparks falling about. Some of you might have noticed a little bit of smoke. I could hear a crackling sound as the steel wool was burning. And if any of you have had the opportunity to do this at home, you'll you'll have there's a metallic smell in the air as you burn the steel wool, and um. You, you are going to experience some heat from the reaction of this combustion reaction. So please remember this experiment is hot, it is burning metal. Please um, ensure you follow all safety precautions. What does the product of the reaction look like? Describe it as much as possible. So basically the product is a reddish, browny, crumbly solid. So in actual fact, similar to the rust that we saw in the car at the beginning of the lesson. So what I would like you to do now is I would like you to take the diagram of rust and I want you to make a concept map of everything that you have learned in today's lesson. So if I just think about it now, you can speak about rust, you can write down the word equation for iron reacting with oxygen gives us um, iron oxide, you can write the chemical formula, you can have an arrow about balancing equations, you can have an arrow about the experiment and any observations you were able to make. So one of the arrows can be actually burning iron and using steel wool and observations of sight, smell, sound. And see if you can jot everything down on this concept map. So you have a nice little summary of a metal reacting with oxygen and specifically with iron and the formation of, of rust, which is iron oxide. Then what I would also like you to do is move on to the worksheet that's associated with this lesson and see if you can work through some of the questions and the scientific investigation that's associated with this experiment. So I hope you had fun this lesson and I'm looking forward to you joining me for future lessons where we look at um, other, other experiments with metals. So bye for now, grade nines. I would like to thank Worksheet Cloud for bringing this lesson to you today and more so to you, grade nines, for showing that extra passion and enthusiasm to join this lesson and the perseverance and determination to um, access these online lessons. So stay safe, keep healthy, and I'm looking forward to you joining me in future lessons. Goodbye, grade nines.